Hello there, Blair from Chaos Costumes again, and I want to teach you what Nomad Sculpt is and how to use it. So first we're gonna start with a basic tour of what the tools are, where they are, and what they do. So the first thing you need to know about Nomad is the tools and where everything is located. So let's start out from the top and work our way across. This is the menu where you can choose your language and minify the UI. So if you want to get like a good screenshot, you can do it that way. Then this is your project menu. You can save from this location, import things, and save as exporting things. Um, I have not used the render thing because that's not what I use it for. Over here, this is where your menus are to add shapes, to add primitives. You can modify your current layers or your scene. Over here, you use the multi-res tool to create a division of your geometry so that you can pack in more detail. If you delete lower, you can see how dense that mesh is, but we're not gonna do that quite yet. Then you can voxel remesh. So if you remesh it, it kind of recalculates your geometry. So let's do that and hit remesh. That's a pretty common tool that you'll wind up using, but we don't need to do that right now. Then we go to dynamic typology. I don't use this for the sake of, I'm not trying to make things for video games or for rendering. I'm trying to 3D print things, so I do not use that. However, I do use this menu. This is the decimate menu. What this will do is recalculate your shape in a lower topology number so that it can be printed easier and calculated better by your 3D printer. And also is, it saves a lot faster. Then we're gonna go into this, and this is your material menu. So I tend to use additive if I need to see through something to see if something's touching and figure out if there's any like bad geometry. I don't use any of these things down here just the additive because I'm not rendering anything. This is where you can choose your material and what it looks like when you're sculpting. So you could use Madcap or Unlit, Object ID or Instance ID. And typically I use Lit PBR. And then this I do not use either. This is just the rendering menu. You can use that if you want to get good renderings of what you're doing without making it or printing it, but I do not use that. The background, I tend to use reference images. So I'll put a reference image back here and you can see what you're working with so you can utilize that as well your reference. I'm gonna toggle that off for now. And the camera menu, this is important. There's perspective and orthographic. I tend to sculpt in orthographic, which means that it's kind of like 2D, so everything's on the same level. The front of it is at the same level as the back of it. Unfortunately, that's not how it looks in real life. The way your eyes see things are in perspective. You want to kind of look at things in perspective before you choose to print something, because otherwise it won't look right to your eyes when you print it. Next up, we're going to tour the left side of the screen. Up here is the symmetry tool. If you press and hold it, it pulls up a more detailed menu where you can do symmetry all the way around, do radial symmetry. Typically you want world symmetry. If you're having problems with symmetry, it's probably toggled on local and you want it on world. If you forgot that you were just sculpting asymmetrically, you can force the mirror this way where you can select these two buttons or you could flip your object and reorient it this way but those are more advanced things this menu is also up here too same thing the left side here we have the brush size this is the intensity and how deep or like high or low it sculpts here's the subtract or additive thing so let's say if you have subtract toggled it will subtract the shape if you have additive toggled it goes in a positive direction. We have just a quick access to the smooth tool over here. The smooth tool is also over here. It's the same tool. And the mask tool is easily accessed over here. The mask tool is also over here as well. We have the hide tool which is very useful if you want to look around objects or only modify one side. It's kind of like the mask but you're able to see around objects and you can clear that. It's not a permanent adjustment, it just hides it for you temporarily. And then there's the gizmo over here, which you can move your object around up and down and rotate it if you need to. Finally down here, we have the paint options. I typically don't use these because I'm just trying to 3D print stuff, but this is good for rendering. You can change the roughness, the metallicness, you can even make it like kind of almost chrome-like, right? But I don't tend to use that. And then this down here, 
I can't use that for what I'm trying to do, but here. The brush tool, you can change the textures of the brush. So if I do that, it's really lumpy, but it's not quite what I want to teach you the basics. Now we're going down here to the undo and redo, but that also works with two fingers and three fingers. So two fingers is undo, three fingers is redo. Then this is the history over here of what you've done. If you really want to go back really far, you can go this route. Over here is the x-ray. So let's say if we have two shapes here, I can depict the x-ray a lot better. So we'll clone that and I'll teach you how to do that. If you do x-ray, you can see through the other objects and the object you have selected, then you can only see that one. That's a very useful tool. There's the voxel remesh here also. It's just a quick tool right there. The grid is if you wanted to see like the floor of your object. I typically don't have that toggled. The wire mesh is so that you can see what the mesh looks like. The inspector is mostly for like UV mapping things. I do not use that. And there's the lock tool down here that locks your selection so you can't accidentally tap something. So if you could affix your eyeballs to the top right corner, we're gonna go through that menu. So this menu has like brush settings if I had mask selected, there was a lot more options there. This one is the stroke or the brush menu, the alpha menu. If I wanted to draw with a texture, it's also located over here too, the same same menu. But I typically don't go from here. This is the fall off. Sometimes I play with this fall off if I want very specific actions to happen with my brush. Otherwise, I just keep it its typical shape. Then this is the filter. The filter is the most important in front facing vertexes only. Mostly when you're stamping or you don't want to mess with something behind something. If I don't have front facing vertexes only and I use the stamp tool, it'll go behind my sculpture. It's really annoying. So this toggle is surprisingly important and it's just this really hidden tool with a little checkbox. But remember where that is. It's up here with this little, little menu guy filter up here. The pressure, sometimes I mess with the pressure, but I typically don't. Then up here is just the paint. So what color you want things, I typically don't mess with that for 3D printing. This is what the symmetry menu looks like, big. The same menu that was over here. So this menu is the same exact menu as this menu. It's just, this is just the easy access one. This beaker tool right here, what it does is it universally smooths everything or relaxes everything or changes the exposure saturation or contrast or hue but that's not necessary mostly we're worried about the universal smooth tool let's say we just added this here and we'll click on the beaker and it'll universally smooth that entire shape so that you don't have to smooth it manually this is layers i don't mess with layers so that when I do print something, I'm not messing with layers at all. The layers are more useful for people that are trying to render things. This is the display settings. If your shape looks kind of funky, it might have smooth shading turned on. Otherwise, you can change the colors of things here. Like the other side of like a sculpture is like this like tan color, the highlight. I have turned to black. That's the way I like it because I'm a monochromatic babe. And then the changes the mask color. So if you want the mask to be not gray, there's that. Then up here, you have have the shortcut so you see this bottom menu down here what you could do is add or remove things so like I don't want to see the wire mesh it's there sometimes it hides the lock thing I think they fixed that bug this is where you find it and then this changes like the way that your menu looks and the colors and whatnot I like red because I don't know why and then we got the camera thing i have the finger turned off for sculpting so i can kind of rest my hand against the screen this doesn't have really good hand rejection so that's why i keep my stylus so far away from what i'm doing and then we got the key bindings i don't use that at all because i don't have a keyboard um and the debug menu which i have never used in my life this over here changes the orientation of the menu like you can make it bigger. If you select this little corner here, you can make it bigger or smaller. I'm so used to it being so narrow like this that I kind of just scroll through what I need to. Now we get to move on to the thing that you've all been waiting for, the menu to the far right over here. So let's start out with the brush tool. The brush tool builds up shapes and you can change its intensity so it's not as intense, but it kind of builds up this way where it kind of makes this bulb tool. If you change the brush style, it changes its texture. We'll undo that. And then I'm going to show you the subtract of every tool. So if you look at this and let's uh, 
go back to the little square guy. It just like kind of digs in like that. And then the clay tool kind of like builds up almost like sketching. And then you can go in with the smooth tool to like smooth out what you just built up. And then this is what subtract looks like, where it subtracts that shape like that. Now on to the move tool. Move tool does what it says it's gonna do, where it moves, right? So if you can grab onto something and move it around, I tend to use this to gently modify a sculpture that I'm not super pleased with what it's doing. This is a very useful tool and I, I use it quite often. If you toggle normal over here, it'll just move on the normals. The normals are, I guess, the little arrows by which everything abides by. So it's like perpendicular to the sculpture, if that makes sense. Onto the nudge tool. The nudge tool isn't very obvious unless there's like a shape here. So let's nudge that. So what this does is it kind of moves it along the surface. So it's not quite like the move tool where if you drag stuff, it'll pull it all the way out. This will push it around. And this doesn't have like an alternative subtract option. I kind of showed you the smooth tool already, but I'll show it to you again, where if you do stuff like that and then smooth it down, you can like smooth out your shapes. I use this tool quite often. And then there's the drag tool. The drag tool is really interesting, where if you drag a shape, it'll wind up going all the way out. If you do that, you can make like arms and tendrils and stuff like that or spikes if you turn down the intensity you can kind of make like hair if you make it real small like this is kind of the way that i do fur textures and whatnot where i'll just drag out a whole bunch of little spikes and then that will make hair texture and then we'll undo all that next tool is we have inflate and it pretty much does what it says it's doing. It'll kind of like blow air into your sculpture where if you want it to kind of bulb out like that it makes it bigger. And same with subtract, it just subtracts the inflate here. Next up we have the crease tool and I use the crease tool quite often. It does what it says it's going to do where it adds this little crease in there. But if you want to invert it, it'll create this ridge instead. Next up is one of my favorite tools is the stamp tool. How you change the stamp is over here or if you want to you can go over here and this is the same menu. They tend to go down here and you can stamp things and stamp designs. So like this is what the stamp tool does. Um, if you're not careful though, it'll stamp the back side of something. So if you make it like real big, it'll start messing with the back side, right? Well, this is where this one tool comes in handy is the filter, the filter front facing vertexes only. Then if you make it real big, it's only stamping the front and the back is not touched, if that makes sense. So that's really important to notice. If you subtract, it just carves it in here. Later on, I'll teach you how to make your own alpha stamps. It's actually surprisingly easy and you'll be dumbfounded by how easy it is to do. Next up, we have the flatten tool and it does what it says it does, where it flattens around the surface. So I tend to use this tool if there's like this like lump that I'm not super fond of and the smooth tool isn't really working for me, I'll use the flatten tool. And next up, we have the mask. And so if you mask off a portion, what'll happen is that it will not be modified by anything that you do to it. So like I mask that off. So now if I subtract that, it doesn't touch that area. Or if I add to it, it doesn't touch that area. And it's very useful if you want really sharp shapes and fine details, you'll put in a mask. Or if you don't want to mess with something, you'll put in a mask. Same with like the select mask, it's just, you select it this way, right? I like to use the polygon tool just to get really precise angles and stuff if I need them. If you tap these nodes, it'll make them sharp or round. It just makes the mask. And this little green dot validates the what your selection is. This tool over here is the paint tool. You can paint what you're doing. This is typically only useful if you're trying to render things and make them nice. The thing that goes with the paint tool over here is a smudge tool. So like, let's say you want to like smudge things around and like kind of blend out shapes and colors like that. This, the smudge tool works for that, but I don't use it for what I'm trying to do. Right, next up we have the trim tool. So the trim I use quite frequently. Here's the rectangle trim. You could just trim this shape in half, right? Same with like the line. The line works like this, where it just trims the entire scene from one side. 
Same with the polygon tool. You validate that and it will trim it out. Another thing about the polygon tool, if you want to move it around, grab it by the little green thing. That will, that will push it around for you. Same with the ellipse. And if you have flip selected, what it'll do is that it'll keep this. So whatever's in that shape, it'll keep instead of it deleting it. The layer tool um, builds up a layer and it's not an accumulated stroke. It like builds it up. I use this to make like lines and stuff or like building up edges, things like that. I typically don't use the project tool, but maybe I could. This looks like it's trimming, but I, I typically don't use the project tool. This layer tool, I have no active layers and I typically don't use it. The pinch tool, what it'll do, let's say you have like two shapes together or two details together and you'll go in with the pinch tool and it will do what it says it does, where it'll pinch those shapes together. If you select the invert, it'll push those shapes apart, if that makes sense. The planar, what it does, it kind of like carves in on a plane. So as long as you don't lift up your pencil, it'll carve it in, that that plane that you selected. And I think it abides by the normals. The same with like the fill, like it'll fill on one plane of existence. The measure tool, I tend to use when I want specific measurements. So Nomad sculpts things dimensionally accurate. So like right now, this is like 0.8 millimeters. It's microscopic. It's very, very tiny. If you export this and try to 3D print it, it will be super, super tiny. Here we have the gizmo and I use the gizmo very frequently. So you can move things up and down, side to side. Also, what I use a lot is the clone tool. So I can clone shapes so that I don't have to add new primitives. Here we have the lathe tool. And so if you draw like shape with the lathe tool, it'll make like this like round shape with that area, kind of like a lathe, where if you want, I like, draw half a shape and then all of a sudden you got this guy here, but I don't typically use it because it's a little, little unwieldy and hard to control. And there's the transform tool. I typically don't use this mostly because I only use the gizmo. View, if you're ever giving your tablet to somebody and say, hey, look what I made without them ruining it, use the view tool. This is so that you don't modify anything, you can see it. Also, if you have a mask on your design, like a layer mask on your design, you can hide it so you can see what's going on without removing the mask. The tube tool is an also a very useful tool to me. Um, I use it quite often. It's one of my favorite tools. You draw like a little tubey guy. The mirror tool up here, you can toggle it so that you're drawing on a mirror. The tube tool is one of my favorite things and there'll be a whole episode about that because it's very complex on how to use it and how to get it to do what you want it to do. I like it a lot. It does a lot of cool things. We have the split tool right here and if you split things what it'll do you can't see it. It'll split the shapes so like there's two separate shapes now and you can see it on this menu here where these are the layers here and that's useful if you're trying to like cut things in half and have two separate shapes so that you can print them separately. Here we have the select tool and it just is a little marquee tool that you can use to select your objects. The insert tool like let's say you want to insert like a primitive from that you can insert primitives that way and like I'll say we're not a sphere and all these things so I don't know what happened but it collated a whole bunch of shapes that's one <laughs> that's how the insert tool works and here I made my own special tool we're not going to acknowledge that the quad remesher is something that I feel like it's more useful for people who are trying to render things so I typically don't use it same with like the face group you can determine which group is which when you're trying to render things, but that's not useful to me. And then there's the hide tool down here. The same tool that's over here, this one is over here also. It doesn't do anything special other than hide what you're looking at, but it doesn't delete it. Like it looks like it's deleted, but it, it's, it's truly not. You can clear that and your shape is still there. So what do you think? <laughs> I hope that tour was very helpful to you and to know where the tools are and how to get to them. And you can go back to this video of like, oh, where is this one tool? It's right here. And oh, I wanna, I wanna do this, but I don't remember how. This is where we go. And then on the next episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a basic design and execute it and then print it so that you can use your new knowledge of where the tools are and how to accomplish a goal.